Hi everyone, welcome to the Oak Hill Industrial Railroad. Let's do some switching. Well, happy Sunday morning, everybody. Let's pick up with part two of the Oak Hill Industrial Railroad. Move the camera a little bit on you. So we're we'll picking up, uh, we need to move the car that we just left on the main onto the passing siding. It sure would be a lot easier if I had three tracks here, uh, double-ended tracks here, but Oak Hill didn't, as far as I know. Uh, uh, they did have uh, a place where a couple of sidings lapped over, which the B&O was sort of famous for that in uh, Ohio, but uh, didn't have room to model it, so and they were actually north of town. I had a lot of trouble getting this car coupled. Uh, I th thought I had a couple, and I'd back the engine up and move about half an inch and come uncoupled. I think I've got grease in, <laughs> in the coupler pocket, so you have to really be sure that it's uh, that it latches. Nearing this on Saturday morning. It's another beautiful morning. Uh, it's supposed to rain tomorrow, so I got to uh, weed and feed on the yard. I've uh, restacked some firewood, and I'm getting ready to uh, replace the retaining wall on the Garden Railroad. can't run it anyhow because of the leaves, so I might as well replace the retaining wall. This is going to be a pretty short session uh, because switching Ohio fire brick down at the end is uh, going to require quite a bit of shuffling. So we're going to wait on that till next Saturday because if I would put it on this session, we'd probably be up in the 20 to 25 minute range. And I like to keep them shorter than that for you guys. So notice we did not couple the covered hopper onto the box cars. We left it standing there by itself. So now we're going to back up and we'll come all the way around on the main line and we're going to pick up the caboose and the two box cars and we'll end it right before we get ready to go down the siding for Ohio Firebrick. I said, I'll pick up from there next week and uh, move the cameras and get a better view of the action. I like this view, though. I don't, uh, <laughs> you can see Western Auto pretty good uh, from this view. So uh, this is the first time I've ever shot this angle, I think. I didn't use the uh, gimbal. I've got my clamp with the camera in a fixed spot on the fascia. So I can't pan at all. And if I zoom, it has to be with my fingers. So pretty much just left it alone. Thanks for the uh, comments about Jazzy. She's got some energy, she's playing with her toys, but she's just not eating and uh, the only uh, bowel movement she had yesterday was just a tiny little bit of diarrhea. So uh, I still think she's not feeling great. Uh, but give it a couple more days and take her back to the bed if we have to. Sort of discouraged because they haven't really 
you've done anything. I'd like to see them do like take an x-ray or do blood work or something. Uh, they've just been giving her fluids. Right, so we'll just drag the caboose along with us. Woodland Scenics has announced they're going to come out with a traffic light. Um, they are not in stock yet. I assume they're probably made in China and they're on a boat somewhere on the way. Uh, I checked their website. But I am going to put a traffic light at the intersection of Main and Route 93, which is uh, Front Street in Oak Hill. And I'm probably going to modify it because the only ones they have, they've got a hanging flashing light. And the traffic lights they have are like on pedestals. And I'm going to try to probably make a hanging traffic light, which means I'll need to put some utility poles to hang it off of. And I went digging through my stuff, and I do have some uh, street lamps. So I may be putting some lighting, a little bit more lighting into Oak Hill. I've already got it, so, <laughs> so why not? So we're going to end right about here. Um, next Saturday, I'm going to the train show in Dayton. Uh, with my friend Fran. I uh, probably don't want to stay an hour or two. Usually we won't stay a long time, though, because we go back to his house and run trains, uh, which is in between Cincinnati and Dayton. So I'll put a, uh, like, the notification on it here. But if you happen to be in the area and you see me there, stop and say hi. You know, just uh, like, to, like to meet everybody. So it's the NMR, NMRA Annual Dayton Train Show. And it's next Saturday and Sunday. I said, I'm going to be there on Saturday because Indiana. Driving to Indiana on Sunday. So, hope to see you there. Everybody stay safe. I hate to end the video on a sort of a bad note or sad note. Um, just learned that Alan McClellan passed, passed away. Um, he was the builder of the Virginian in Ohio and the author of the book about it and many, many magazine articles. I was very lucky, I was a member of the Bluegrass Model Railroad Club, I think it was in the early 90s. Uh, he graciously invited us up for like an open house and actually got to run a train on his layout. Uh, it wasn't an operating session, didn't do any switching or anything, uh, but uh, it was really something I'll never forget. Um, you know, so he was a big influence in my model railroading, uh, him and uh, Tony Custer back when he, Tony had his uh, Allegheny Midland and they had uh, operations they uh, tied the two railroads together and just man, both of them had phenomenal uh, layouts and their thinking is mainly what shaped uh, there been a lot of people with fabulous model railroads as far as scenery goes and everything um, 
but uh, their thinking and the explanation of how they did it really was a big influence uh, on my thinking anyhow so um, if you have any memories of his layouts or <laughs> any personal stories uh, put them in the comments he lived a good long life uh, I think he was 88 uh, thankfully Tony Custer is still very active in the hobby writing articles and books and things uh, but if there was a Mount Rushmore for model railroading, Alan McClellan might very well be on it. So, at least in my book, anyhow. So, everybody stay safe.